Thanks for rolling up to it, Mario Certified Pie. Smoke a brother, Drake try to try to go out on me though. Go keep that bit lit though. What's this joint? Tell them what that say, bro. This is six minutes. Alright, we ain't about to be doing no six minutes. Let's uh let's let's do that shit. When I got out of prison, all I had was a stack of legal papers and a, and a sweatsuit. My daughter handed me a flat thing as we were leaving the prison, and I didn't know other than to just put it in my lap. And she says, well, go ahead and talk. And I said, we are talking. And she had to tell me that is a telephone. A telephone didn't look like that in 2002 when I was arrested. So this dude was arrested in 2002 for, for weed, I believe. That's why that's why this is on the chain. A lot of friends of mine knew that I loved to ride a motorcycle. So they all started reaching out to everybody they knew to see if they could find a deal on a motorcycle that I could afford. He's been incarcerated for 20 years and he went on a cross country trip. He went to hug all of his supporters. I got to ride the whole length of Route 66 from here in Chicago all the way to Barstow, California. I rode across uh, deserts, mountains. Uh, I rode 300 miles down the Pacific Coast Highway in the Big Sur. Um, I rode over mountains in uh, Washington State that unfortunately I found they had snow at the top. <laughs> and, uh, I rode through Yellowstone. I rode through uh, the whole west of the United States. It, it was beautiful. So hold on. This nigga do, do 20 years. Come out, do a, do a cross country trip. That I'm saying, uh, on a motorcycle. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Now, 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 now. I'm I'm kind of worried about this story because we're gonna be looking at something else in a second. Cool. Craig was the second prisoner I ever worked with. I was a writer who was writing about cannabis, and like most people, I was unaware there were people serving life sentences for marijuana, and that just haunted me. I couldn't not do something about it. It's comfortable to think that people like Craig were not. Hold on, how many niggas is doing? Uh, what? Lifeforpot.com. We gonna we gonna have to check that website out. For marijuana, and that just haunted me. I couldn't not do something about it. It's comfortable to think that people like Craig were anomalies, maybe those one or two poor souls that got caught in the wheels of justice. But what I learned is it's not an anomaly; it's the way things are regularly done. The name of the federal charge was conspiring to possess with the intent to distribute marijuana. In my case, it carried a sentence of from zero to life imprisonment. And since the discretion is up to the judge, although I had no prior convictions and nobody was hurt, I was nevertheless sentenced to life imprisonment. The statute that I'm charged on. Hold on real quick. So, hold on. Is you can the sentence is zero to life. So he could have he could have went up there, got charged, got convicted, and the sentence still be zero. Is that with every charge everywhere? That's just, it. Seems weird to me. And the uh, sentence that I have is exactly the same as that of El Chapo Guzman, the head of the Sinaloa cartel. Craig's was really. Hold on. Hold on. This nigga. This nigga got the same charge as El Chapo. What was you doing, bro? one of the most egregious stories for a few reasons he didn't use marijuana he was never caught with marijuana he really he was a third party vendor all i see is memories hero what do you mean a third party vendor see see third party vendor to me means this right there's a grower there's a nigga who that grower is selling to he's going to the city and selling it to another nigga that other nigga right there is him What you, and then you say he didn't use marijuana. He wasn't caught with marijuana. He just was selling the shit. Okay. 
uh, all the work I did here and all the years that my business has operated out of here. Well, the name of my original business was Cabin Back Pickup Truck Camper Tops. And we built camper tops for the back of pickups. But unfortunately, I did some work directly for a company that released trailers. And this company would take the trailers down to uh, Mexico, hollow out the lot walls, fill the walls with marijuana, drive those uh, trucks through the border patrol. I didn't know what they were doing. They, they drove the trucks all the way up here, a thousand or so miles away for me to rebuild them back to the... What the fuck, bruh? Hold on, my nigga. Hold on, my nigga. So you was building trailers that was moving all of that shit, bruh? Nigga, no wonder they charge you like El Chapo. My nigga, you, man, you fucking playing, bruh. Look at all that goddamn weed, bruh. Bruh, look at all that shit. Yo, that, yo. <laughs> nigga, bruh. Bruh, now see, like, 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 we seen, we seen some motherfuckers get caught with shit, and we be like, oh, yo, that shit going, that shit going, I mean, fuck up a block for the weekend. Nigga, that shit right there, that's, that right there is fucking up a city, bruh. That's fucking up a city, bruh. That might be fucking up a couple cities, bruh. <laughs> shit, bruh. Their original shape. They saw my participation in their offense by rebuilding the trailers when they were done with them. They saw that as me agreeing to their uh, trafficking of marijuana. I was in. Uh, kind of, bro. Oh, well. Kind of, but not really, though, right? Because let's say all he's doing is just getting empty trailers. He's like, he don't know what the fuck they're doing. Like, what the fuck, bro? Y'all right, keep bringing me these fucked up ass trailers. And then the fucking trailers just keep being fucked up, man. Hey, I fix these shits. Like you know, what I mean, he didn't necessarily <laughs> necessarily have to know. Prison from March twenty third, two thousand two. So just shy of nineteen years. The way a federal life sentence works, there is no possibility of parole. There is no early release. But uh, many of the violent prisoners, bank robbers, and that sort, were, were serving three and four and five year sentences. A person that murdered people, he came in a year after me, and he went home three years ago. Marijuana fans are so. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's not funny, bro. But that's funny, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Because if he really didn't know that the trailers he was fixing was used for drugs, and now I mean he's sitting in there with murderers who's coming in and going home before him, and he just sitting there like, God damn. That's ugly, bro. Celebrating in Denver with voters in Colorado and Washington State, the first ever to make it legal for adults to possess and sell small amounts of pot for recreational use. When they started this over 10 years ago, they would watch stories on the news about cannabis legalization. I would send photos because we would have a booth at events like the High Times Cannabis Cuff, and they were all very hopeful because they were sure help was on the way. It has to be. You know, and now a decade later, they're more feeling like they've been totally forgotten. Under President Obama, he did a special initiative called the Clemency Project, and I went fully through that program his last year in office. I was denied clemency. I'd actually tried under President Bush in 2008, I believe. That one was denied rather quickly. I was released uh, from prison on January 20th, 2021, President Trump's last half day in office. And it was to the last minute. I mean, Craig had already gone to bed. He didn't think it was going to happen. At five minutes after midnight, I talked on the phone with Ivanka Trump, and she told me that her father had commuted my sentence to time served. Well, as a fill-in, depending on... You know what? That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, that's dope. We just gonna leave it at that. Where you live, you may or may not have the right to vote. You don't have the right to have a firearm, things like that. If you have a pardon, it's like it never happened and all those rights are restored. It's extremely rare. Right now, there's 17,400 petitions sitting at the uh, Office of Pardon Attorney filed by the... There's about 130,000 uh, federal prisoners right now. All those petitions are sitting there, and I, I think it's a safe bet that way less than 1% of them will ever be granted. Clemency and a commutation of sentence are the same thing. So what that means is they wiped out your sentence or reduced your sentence in some cases. Clemency is a power only held by the president. And to be honest, I received my clemency because of my connections, which does fill me with guilt. Craig has been working hard since. What, what fucking connection, bro? Got you to fuck the Trump, bro? What, what man, bro? What the fuck, bro? What? Bro, that's bro, man, bro. Once he got out, you know, a lot of prisoners say that they're going to reach back in after they get out, and it never happens. Remember, most of the people in prisons are not lifers like me. Most of them will be released to the society. And many of them come to me that the convictions date all the way back to the 1970s and 1980s. Americans don't even really have an awareness of what's going on in our criminal justice system. We have to admit we got this wrong, and it should have never been illegal in the first place, so let's fix it. That's crazy, bro. I told you we would be checking out something else right now. Oh. I had seen some shit on here, man. Oh, and I wasn't sure. Dude, we was gonna go through this shit. But now this nigga right there had got... Had got, uh... 
his life sentence commuted for 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 moving all oh, that shit, bro. We got a story right here, bro. This nigga got life for one and a half ounces of weed, bro. Like I don't, I don't know how long. Like I don't want to be. Yo, it's M O S H O W Chicago, and we are B A C K A G A I N on another fantastic sucker free fly Friday. And if this is your first time watching the MOSHOW Chicago, I think you have information with relatives, friends, coworkers, anyone that oh, you bro. come to contact with. Yeah, it is a magnificent way to jumpstart if you're driving through the state of Mississippi. This information is for you. I'm going to show you something. Do you see this man right here? I'm going to show you this man right here. You see that man right there? All yeah, right. His name is Alan Russell. He's 38 years old, and now he lives in the correctional facilities in the state of Mississippi for life because he had one and a half ounce of marijuana on his possession. I'm gonna say that again. Alan, yeah, the 38 year old right here, life in prison in the state of Mississippi for having 1.5 ounces of marijuana in his possession. Now, I don't even know if Mississippi is a wreck or not, bro. Let's, hold on, bro. let's see, bro. We got, let's see if we can get a little more, um, Ain't nobody, ain't nobody in the world talking about this shit, bro. Yo, it's M O S H O W Chicago, and we are B A C K A G A I N on another fantastic sucker. Hold on, hold on, that can't be right, bro. Hold on. Alan Russell, search this shit real quick. Uh, uh, continue serving life sentence for marijuana three days ago. And so a year ago they was talking shit about the nigga. In <laughs> this is to, hashtag to, smile. Like, like 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 move quick through this shit, bro. All right, fuck it, bro. We not we not we not gonna keep keep doing this shit, bro. Look, white dude just got let go. El Chapo charges. This nigga, bro, just got life for an ounce, bro. Ounce and a half. Uh, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Those are just what the facts are. 